Hello, everyone. Welcome to Less Code, More Power. We are joined by Megan McCarthy, and she's going to show you a power app that helps track COVID cases in her county. Stay tuned. Hello, and welcome to Less Code, More Power. One, I'm one of your hosts, Donna Sarkar, and this lovely lady, and the one pointing to the right direction now, is Sarah Critchley. Hi, everyone. Hello, everyone. So much for joining us. And by the way, we have an incredible guest today, a true citizen developer story. We'd like to invite Megan McCarthy to join us, who is from the Department of Health. And she has got a fantastic story to share with all of us today. Hi, Megan. Thank you so much for joining us today here on Let's Code More Power. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Fabulous. So will you please tell our viewers a little bit about who you are and what you do? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name is Megan McCarthy. I am an epidemiologist for the Florida Department of Health in a rural county called Sumter County. Um, my background actually, pr even prior to going into public health, was mostly in veterinary medicine. So I have a very lengthy uh, biomedical background. I got my bachelor's degree in biomedical sciences um, and a master's of public health degree. And I'm currently studying some biostatistics at the University of South Florida. So no, no techie background, not, nothing there. <laughs> so, you know, what's super, super interesting is epidemiology, a word we can barely say, but you've been having quite a moment um, over the past, like many, many months, many, many months. And I find it so fascinating how suddenly tech has had to become a part of everyone's lives because suddenly we're all working from homes and closets and, you know, random guest rooms and such and such. So you actually had to turn to technology to solve a real problem for the school districts around where you live. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So um, when schools started reopening in August of 2020, we ran into this uh, conundrum where um, all these students would, and of course, teachers and faculty and staff would be returning to in-person school. And the school board wanted to collaborate with the health department as much as possible in order to know who needs to be quarantined um, or if somebody's in isolation, the difference being Quarantine is if you're exposed and we're watching to see if you become a case or if you're isolated, you're actually sick and you have um, the disease in this case, COVID-19. So we had to come up with a way to track all of these cases and kids being quarantined and exclusions in school and be able to communicate well with not just the, the parents, but the school board as well. So we started with a giant uh, Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, which was a nightmare. And we realized quickly that we needed a better way. Um, so the way that I came across Power Apps was actually um, prior to being an infectious disease epidemiologist. I'm now the epidemiology program manager. But prior to me moving into this position, I was a senior health educator and I was developing a program for falls prevention. And we looked into Power Automate to be able to automate uh, these reports that we wanted to generate for our participants in this program. So I knew a little bit about Power Automate. I kind of dabbed into Power Apps with some of the templates just to play around with it, but nothing really extraordinary happened there. Um, but I realized that there was a need. So I went to my boss and I said, let me build an app. Let me try to build an app and let's see if this works. And fortunately, it worked really, really well. Um, so what we have now is an app that tracks every single person who's either quarantined or isolated. It helps us communicate with the schools as to who shouldn't be in school so that we can have absences excused. Um, a parent isn't able to just keep their kids out from school and say, oh, they were exposed to COVID. They have to have the clearance from the health department. And we're able to kind of mend the, the medical talk, like the school being able to not act as the epidemiologist when the parent reports to exposure has happened or something like that. So really bridging that gap in order to make sure that school functioned, you know, as efficiently as possible and Power Apps allowed us to do that. 
That's amazing. It sounds, it definitely sounds like it connects every, everyone together, right? So like it kind of, and it makes it easy with doing so. Like you said, Excel was a bit of a nightmare in, in that. So not only does it kind of take the data kind of side of that, but it actually makes it easy to be able, or at least easier to be able to track all of this kind of information, right? Absolutely. And it allowed us to collect information that would have just been really difficult to manage without this app, which is really great on the research side. I, I can't wait until things kind of slow down for us to really stop and take a breath and look at this data that we've collected. And I mean, we'll, we'll be able to illuminate a lot of looming questions that we have, like, you know, how do different exposure settings like uh, a school bus versus a classroom versus, uh, you know, a sport, uh, how does that exposure setting re uh, correlate to the amount of secondary transmission or how many times you have somebody who's exposed actually become a case? Like, does this setting affect that? So those are questions that we have that we don't have answers to. Mm -hmm. And we have all this data that we're going to be able to look at, you know, when things calm down a little bit more in order to make better recommendations and practice better public health. I love that you're using tech and data science to do this rather than just assuming that you'll remember or being able to just keep it all in your head. So we hear you've got like a bit of a demo to show us. Would you mind? Yes, absolutely. So um, in order to make sure that I'm not accidentally showing any uh, private health information, I added a bunch of test um, people. So. What this is, is our library, PUI stands for person under investigation. So that could be a person in quarantine or in isolation. Um, if somebody is in isolation or if they're actually sick, they would be in green. Um, if a person's in quarantine, then they're black. So the way that this works is if we, for example, get word from the school that somebody has reported that they have been exposed. The school's actually able to fill out a form and type that information in for us and it automatically gets generated into a SharePoint list, which then comes up in this library. So we're able to just refresh this and check it and we see, oh, somebody needs notification. So we're able to go in and get all the information that we need, including phone numbers, what their address is, um, whether, or this is something that we would fill out. So who exposed them, Merlin is our, um, statewide database for uh, reportable disease surveillance, um, whether or not they're in Merlin, if it's an ongoing exposure, the date of last exposure, which is very important because that determines how long they have to quarantine for. And then um, the CDC, when they revise their quarantine options to allow for shorter quarantines, um, you know, Power Apps allowed us to easily be able to edit that and kind of change our uh, the way that we input data and the way that we get uh, these dates settled very easily. So it, it's it's just been amazing how how quickly we're able to implement changes because as I'm sure everybody knows at this point with COVID-19, the guidance almost changes <laughs> weekly or daily, it feels like sometimes. So being able to change it around and fit our needs was very convenient. So it calculates all these dates for us based on the quarantine options selected. And we're able to generate letters of quarantine or isolation stating, okay, you need to be, you need to stay home for X amount of days if they need it. Sometimes the parents will need that for work if their child's been excluded from school and now they need to show their boss, my child can't go to school, I have to stay home. So we're able to generate those letters for them just with the click of a button. Those letters are automatically emailed to the person, to the user um, who clicked the button. Um, so we're able to put what school they're in, everything like that, like all, all the information that we need. And then of course, a general notes section where we can put in whatever notes we need to do. So it's incredibly convenient. And we always like to follow up with all of our cases and contacts to release them, to let them know, okay, you're cleared. And we have all that information here. The schools uh, wanted a letter for every single student that was released by the health department. So we have those letters get generated just with the click of a button as well. Um, and again, that e that is automatically emailed to the person who clicked the button, and then we can then forward that on to the parent or the school if necessary. 
Wow, this is amazing. Donna, I don't know about you, like we have such amazing guests. I always have to be like so controlled about the questions. Yeah, like right. I have so, I'm mm -hmm. like, wow, this is amazing. Yeah, Megan, I, wanna... This is Sorry. so, I just love the amount of paperwork you produced. Yeah. Otherwise each one of these would be a sheet of paper that someone is gonna be responsible for typing have somewhere and they're gonna lose it. Right, just the paperwork part, like every single. Not even fun, is it? Right, who wants to make documents manually? Like, what yeah. are you? Can't wait to go to yeah. work and make docs. I can't imagine it, you've replaced like so much manual labor and like boring manual labor, right? For so many yeah. people, so they can actually be challenged in solving actual problems that we have versus like, oh, go write up the thirtieth document saying no, you're clear to go back to school. So that is yeah. just wonderful. Megan, one of, the, one of the questions I really want to ask you, right, is that you, you know, you have this background in veterinary medicine, then you kind of went into like the kind of biomedical kind of field and, and really kind of what you do now. What, how was the experience for you? Like, I know that you had some exposure to power automate, right? But making all of this, like, how long did it take you? It only took me maybe a couple of weeks, honestly. And Whoa. yeah, and I utilized a lot of searching and YouTube videos and um, and just forums and things of that nature in order to, and whenever I had a question of, can I do this? It's so easy to just, can you do this in Power Apps and get an answer right there, right there and exactly how to do what you're searching for. So it really was so easy and almost kind of fun in a way. It's It's kind of like solving a puzzle and I really like puzzles. So it just piecing the puzzle pieces together in order to make, you know, the end product, it it really didn't take me a long time at all. And it saved us so much time. So the the effort that went into this, it's exceeded exponentially, you know, the amount of time that we've saved just doing, like you said, data entry. We would have had to hire just data entry clerks to handle the amount of information that we have to collect for each person. And we're doing this by the hundreds, um, you know, at one point by the thousands. So it's really important that we have a nice, easy way to find it with a nice recall, too, because I have a large team of uh, people all working on the same kind of thing. So if a parent calls one investigator and then talks to another investigator, all we have to do is type in a name and we're able to get all the information that we need, which is just incredible. It makes our job a lot easier. That's amazing. I love that. I love it so much. I love that you, you felt that was completely worth the investment to go and learn through YouTube forums, all of these things. And, you know, our community is a big reason that people are able to learn about Power Platform so easily because they know what people need. They know the questions they get asked. They know the questions they had at the beginning of their learning journey. So thank you so much for coming on and sharing this incredible story with us. So uh, we never let our guests go without assigning some sort of homework for the audience. So is there something you'd like the audience to go and do or try today? Well, for any audience member who is dabbling in Power Apps, I think that one of the most fun things I did with Power Apps were these buttons to generate the letters. Yeah. So I would say if I were to give a homework assignment, it would be um, work with Power Apps and Power Automate to have a button result in a Power Automate flow to grab a template and plug in information from the app into that template to have a finished product, a finished form. That would be the, the homework assignment that I would like to give uh, because that has just been so incredibly helpful and time saving. That's I love awesome. That. I love how that specific you are. That's, yeah. that's like, that's <laughs> like so good. No, and it's a great yeah. thing. Like I think we're probably gonna tell our guests going forward to be like that specific, right? And so, cause I, I think by giving people the, the that's that specific nature, Megan, what you're kind of like, there's gonna be for those watching, you know what to do now, right? Like you need to literally go and do a specific thing. And by the sounds of it, Megan, like, you know, just like how you use that feature, there's gonna be so many different interpretations of that feature that, that the benefit. Yeah. Right. yeah, and we've talked about how, um, you know, when COVID-19 is over, hopefully one day, um, the now that we have the capabilities to make apps like this, I'm actually working on a new app that will help us track just 
any kind of outbreak of any kind of disease in uh, group settings like long-term care facilities or correctional facilities and things like that. Um, because right now we don't really have a great way to track those things um, in, in just one place. There's a lot of different places to track a lot of different things. But what if you had one thing that could have all of it? And Power Apps allows that. So that's my next project that I'm going to be working on. And we're just... We feel very lucky that we had this resource available to us because it has really made our jobs easier and it's made us better public health workers. I love that. Power Apps helps you be better public health workers. That is an amazing tagline. And believe you me, we will be telling everyone that news. <laughs> Megan, thank you so much for joining us today. This has been an enlightening conversation. Sarah and I are like, Problems we did not know that can be solved. Problem we didn't know that can be solved. So we have learned so much from you and we will tell your story broadly to everyone we know. Thank you very much for joining us. And for everyone else, tune in next time to Less Code. More power. See you then.